sometimes live off the ocean. All the time you live off the ocean. Both ways, eating and surviving. That's the only way. You know, that's not like overkilling or overfishing. It's just the only way we know. So you've been doing that here for a long time? Yeah. You know, like I said, the ocean, you take care of the ocean, the ocean will take care of you. You know, be greedy, the ocean take care of you. You greedy, there's something wrong with that. But we're not greedy, we just take what we can eat. So you guys take care of the ocean? And, yeah. And yeah, but we gotta eat some other stuff on the rocks, like the banana, all that, but that's, that's good. And the ocean re replenish them. Same like the fish. We only take what we need, not, not overfish. No overfish then, what you gonna fish for the next time? Air biscuits, you know, like eat air biscuits. So, so you guys uh, have been living here and then you... Uh, fish over here. Over well, here get big sharks too. No, no, let me get you wrong. You're not going to go over there and just land the shark and then you take his fish. He's about to give you a good scare. <laughs> Where your boat just got like, a big wiggle. You, all of a sudden your boat going this way, that thing do on hula. There's a fucking shark underneath you just wiggle his tail. Your boat just like, woo. Then you think about what you're doing. <laughs> Me and my friend, we go lay net over here one night. Then my friend tell me, oh, go check the net. So I paddle kayak out there. Halfway I get out there, I'm looking around. How come the whole ocean is bright? I mean, it was bright. You could see everything on the ground. The moon was bright, but the thing was hitting the shark's stomach. I never know that. The ocean was getting so bright. The closer I got, the light got brighter. All of a sudden, I see this freaking thing turn over. It was a fucking huge tiger. 10 plus, but he was all tied up in his, my friend's lay net, six inch net, six inch eye net. This shark was stuck. We were drag, we had a hard time dragging him in because one time he jumped out of the water, hey, we dropped everything and run in. He, but he was still stuck. We dragged him to the sand. Hey, the shark was so huge, we couldn't keep any part of him. So I tell my friend, we go cut him out. And we bring him on the sand, this shark was so huge. The tail, my friend is like five, six. The tail was as tall as him, a little bit taller. And every time my friend was trying, we was trying to move the shark, the shark just wiggle, and my friend just slide to the side, slide back and forth like this. But he couldn't get away the shark. Hey, we even cut. I look at him, I say, look, his teeth, his teeth is going to let him. <laughs> he opened his mouth like this, it was so huge. The, inside his mouth, the teeth on the bottom of his jaw was going to And all he had in his mouth was like this open. And I think he was just pulling everything in like this. The racks was just moving. I say, holy fuck. I tell, hey, you better remember me. I'm going to cut you out, you fricker. I'm going to let you go. My name is Iki, my friend John. I'm going to cut you out. You better remember us. You see us in the water. Hey, he's shocked. When he went, when the water came, hey, all he did was go, wah, wah. This shock was gone. He was just thinking, my friend, when we wake up, my friend's daughter will tell him, look what your dad went catch. Scared the shit out of her. She never liked swimming. She came over there for a swim. But not that day, she had to leave. Because she said, she's not gonna swim. Hey, this shark was 10 plus. The, standing, standing by the tail, my friend was, the tail was bigger than him. The tail was maybe like this big, by the team. but the team went, when the team went go like two feet in the front, the stomach came out like this, boom! Was so wide. And the thing kept on going like this. The shark just kept on going taller. And by the time, the head, the top of the head, he was past my head. The top of the head was sticking like this, and his mouth was like this, and the teeth was just, all you could hear, the whole time his mouth was open, the thing was making that noise. Crazy, all you could see the teeth like this, and his mouth was like this, and the teeth just pulling you in like this. The rack, the thing was, had so much teeth, I've never seen that. On two sides of his mouth, had rows of teeth. Those ones wasn't moving, only the one on the top and the bottom was just pulling them like this. So he bites you, then they pull me in already. But every time he bites you, the thing pulling you apart. <laughs> For real, boy. <laughs> was, but the shark went digger, eh? Me and my friend couldn't believe, but the shark went get stuck because he was eating all the fish inside the net. But he was stuck and he was on his belly, but the whole ocean went look like daytime, him on his stomach, on his back. The, the moon was shining, the whole ocean was bright. It was like somebody turned on the light underneath the water. You never need light, you could go like, wow, you can see everything. But that's because the shark's stomach was so fucking white, the moon would just light up the ocean with his stomach. <laughs> we waited to came low tide before we dragged his ass in. It took us a long time, but 
maybe like hour and a half. My friend was watching us, understand, we yelling for help. He's like this. No, <laughs> <laughs> he didn't really come by us. We pulled him on the sand. This bugger was so huge. 10 plus. And all of a sudden, you could see these little gray things going on in the back. Then here we go, this. when he first opened his mouth, he had, like, poof, had one head came rolling out. You know what it was? His freaking tongue. He was like, oh. fucking thing came rolling out was his tongue. When it looked like on the head, one big ass thing came rolling out. He took his first breath. As soon as he did that, then a shark was like, <laughs> he wanted to bite. But hey, I didn't let him go. He never bought us since. And that's a long time, you know, many years. We go swim, so strange, but we had a shark no bar us. And before, before you was kind of always weary about that. But not now, go in the water, you know, get somebody bigger than everybody else out there. This bugger was 10 feet plus. And no more any other shark out there. I mean, he's more bigger now, but 10, 10 feet plus shark and been many years. I don't mind going in the water. Before I used to always think about this fucker. <laughs> but not ever since we caught the shark and let him go. He owes us one, that's why. We're at Ali Beach Harbor. Right, that's yeah, uh, Ali Beach Harbor. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so over here was was always like Ali Beach and, and it had. Yeah, and then it just had all trash and trees. We used to park up here. It was nice when we could park then. Then we closed them to this. They were in shoot the line, it's so weird that they shot it from way out there on the. On the the sign out on the corner, they shot it from out there to the stop sign. That's why the things stay in weird shape. But this is a good place over here. Even when it had the trees, was good. Yeah, guys? Yeah. Yeah, yeah and uh, so, so you came over here 15 years ago? Yeah, maybe longer then. But I stay over here like 13, 14 years over here in this harbor. 11 of them in the garden. So bring them young knee knee. That's uh like supposed to be going extinct. That's why my friend went go bring them to me. Jerry. He said I gotta make cuttings and make some more cuttings. But I never cut them yet. That's just for give everybody. You know why I started this garden? Because I told you I would kill my dog by accident, eh? Over here, I stepped on my dog. It was only on puppy, I killed him. The next day I started the garden. about the starfish this was for my dog my spade came after my club the club is for Marvin and his sister and the brother the spider lily represents somebody who died all our friends oh you know all the plants it's all one person going around Plenty guys in like one year had maybe like almost half of this when die in one year. But still yet I make things for everybody like this. This for Marvin and his brother and the sister, that's why I get three circles at a club. One for each of them. The diamond. This was the last thing I made before I started anything else. The diamond just for everybody. That's us. Everything I even get from people. When grow. 
like all the Lao Hala plants right there. And this one right here is from the lifeguards. Because they had to get rid of their plants. By the lifeguards and they had to get rid of them, so they gave it to me. Look at the king this thing. Come big, the house. The hollow end will be. This is my friend Jan, she passed away. Made something for her and my brother. Me, this is my first turtle I made, but I get a couple turtles. This is the smallest turtle. This used to be an alligator. That's his mouth right there, you see him. <laughs> used to be an alligator. But the guys run them over with their moped. Oh, that, and that, this is uh, Arizona grass. You know what is Arizona grass? Akuli Kuli. You know the Akuli Kuli? This one, the flower, I think, come big and purplish pink. The one they sow. That's uh, the other. They like four Akuli Kuli over here. That is one of them. I get a real small Hawaiian one with the fingers like this. And I'll get these crown flowers for us. The lady, they said she like crown flower, the queen. So I get that one and the purple one and the white one. I plan for the queen. We know more peacocks, but. <laughs> <laughs> this used to be the island, all eight of them. But the thing all overgrown. So it used to be Nihau, Kauai, Oahu, Molokai. You know how the islands go? It used to be like that. All these islands. Never used to have no trees over here, only had two calvary trees. Only there's two calvary trees. The two stumps, that's the only thing I had over here. All these coconut trees, they're in love life, so they didn't grow. See? This is all bushes. And I take any joint thing for plants. Anybody get plants? They can bring them over here. These, these coconut trees, not old, maybe like seven years, but they're big. They're taller than the other ones. This is my friend Butter's house right here. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is my only variegated tree I get. Strangler thing. Oh, Brandon. Like I was saying, all these lilies represent somebody who died. Where's Butter's one? See this spider lily? It's the only one, it's the only kind you're going to see over here. Anywhere. Not going to have no spider lilies like this. Usually when a thing yellow, the thing dead eh? The thing come yellow and the thing turn brown for dye. That's a real different one because you know why how that one was created? The guys been poisoned. Them. But the thing came yellow and the thing started growing like yellow and green. The guys didn't round them up. <laughs> but they haven't fooled them because the things never died though. This used to be stripping tail. It's all fuck up. <laughs> I mean I collect wood, see? My wood, this is a man on the moon, my wood. I collect any kind. Something that look weird, I put them in the garden. But look weird to them, look good to me. <laughs> it's all about life. Life is everywhere over here. Everything is growing. ask anybody they're gonna tell you I'm building I don't know why but I'm building for my dog long time but I look at it is the thing nice my dog happy and the thing is nice anybody can come in the garden you know because it's for everybody but some people, they just walk around. But hey, that's your own problem. I tell them, come in. They don't like coming inside, it's your own problem. But hey, this is open land for everybody. Who's this, Jasper Warren? Yeah. Oh, excuse me. friendly goose. Hey, Jasper! Get him. That's my friend coming. He's gonna bring you something for eat, I think. <laughs> so, so, uh... So you guys have like a, a stable life here? Yeah, I, I, 
I should say uh, I'm happy. My dog's happy. Actually, it's for my dogs be safe too. My dogs don't know anything hey, coolie, else. Hey, coolie. They only know the harbor. What's up, guys? Not Jasper. Jasper. They only know the harbor. That's why they stay here. Oh, you see me from far, huh? <laughs> Yeah. But again, you're you're living a a, a, a nice uh, yeah nice life nice uh, not a lavish life, but our garden is cool. We love it, you know. The only thing, no more over here, no more no ceiling. Ceiling is not right. Right, guys, ceiling not good. Yeah. But if you need some place to stay, you can come over here. Come see me, you know. I'm friendly to everybody. If you need some place to stay, I met some guys from Waianae. They want, you know, he come over there. Oh, brother, what you can stay here for a couple of nights. I said, sure. And I didn't even know the guy. Hey. He stayed a couple of nights, then he would go home. Then he come back, he bring me something to grind. That's how we came friends. I forget his name, but he come every once in a while. So it's for everybody. This guy come. Oh, two. That's all. You just gotta come, you know. We all take a chance when we come around or live like this, you know. It's, it's just different from what was and what is now. All this, from this tree on all the way to the wall, pillars, all we grow at the same time. This grass and that grass. All the same time because over here was all dead. Black sand. When you walk through here, your feet is all black. You go to the beach. Before you get to the beach, you get black feet. <laughs> as soon as you get on the sand, the white sand, then you know you get black feet. Because when you walk through here, the sand was black before. Yeah, boy? Yeah. I mean, you, that's the worst thing. As soon as you come over here, your sand is all, your feet is all black. Because just from walking on the sand. But now it's all green. No, yeah, now it's all green. It's happy now. But it's, it's better now than it was before. You can lay down over here. Before you couldn't lay down over here. <laughs> it's all dirt city. Even the guys who have picnic. Before they wouldn't like picnic up here because it was all dirty sand. Nobody like make on picnic in the dirty sand. Mm -hmm. so, so it helps out the community. And of course. Community. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why they make like that. They like cut one side but not the other side. They're crazy, the people. It's supposed to be for everybody. Like, things say it's public. No say uh, policeman, no say state. Say public. That's all of us. Right? That's what's supposed to be. Public mm -hmm. is everybody. But they close the public park nowadays. How come the public never vote on that? <laughs> huh? No. They never vote on that. That's crazy. One man or one group of people make a decision for all of us and tell you, oh, there's no camping. Now, these guys say, amended by RO something. ROH. Get on top of the sign. Amended by ROH. Oh, authorized by ROH. Who is that? I never heard of them. Hey! I never heard of them. Stop it. Right? They're supposed to be a known group. Where, uh, hey, hey. How can one make the decision for it? everybody? Mutu. That's not right. Hey. Yeah? Nobody would vote for no camping. Now you can go camp on the beach. That's crazy. All our lives we live on the beach. Camping. Nobody grumble. All of a sudden, they make a new law. They said, oh, amend it. What was broken? Nothing was broken, but they changed it. <laughs> no, no camping. No, uh, any kind. They just make their own rules. Right? Who is that? ROH. I don't know. You know who that is? Huh? Uh, how are you? You know who that ROH is? I think it's uh, uh, revised ordinance. Why they went revised them? See? No more reason. That means they can change them anytime they like. Without even saying anything. Oh, we're going to change this. Wow, you never tell us. There's no need. Right? That's not right. How many people is that? 
like poor, make a decision for the rest of the island. <laughs> they vote, okay, two against him, so then now they get one more guy, who gonna vote for? Okay. Lahala, Milo used to be everywhere. Yeah. Put the shade there because the thing used to grow over the, yeah, yeah. the cement pillars. But now look them. No more shade on the beach. This was the only one. This one, these guys went kill them by poisoning this tree. This tree went snap. I'm going to cut all the branches off. And the leaves was all yellow. But the thing was strong. The tree came back like this now. The thing was on huge tree. It would have been more better standing up. But I got them poison them. The thing just went snap at its root. Just broke the wall, everything. But they said, they never report them because that's one number of that tree. It's a milo tree, eh? So you're supposed to count them. Okay, so the... So See, the they can't even kill them. So the milo tree is what? Is one number, like the core tree. You know, okay. all the core trees is a number. Yeah. They get them all record down. Even milo. Milo, coal. That's all the Hawaiian trees that get left over here. Mm. Because, but they never call them. They never call them when the thing went fall down. They're supposed to. But I'm gonna trim when the thing was all bullet head and the thing came back to life. They thought it was dead, but the bugger was stronger than we thought. The came back fast. And now look, he gives shade over there. That's what they do. that's what they do. They take away the shade and then they take away the water. They take away the water after they take away your shade because you're gonna be all hot. That's when they cut them off. <laughs> but you see, I used to carry my water for all these guys. All the plants over here, I used to put them in uh, two two liter bottles and push with barrels. Maybe like 10 wheelbarrows a day. That's when I was crazy. <laughs> this was all dirt, was never had nothing, no plants. But when I started digging out the weeds, the grass started coming. I see that, I just dig more and more and more. The grass just keep on coming. Look, now we get grass everywhere. Before you just walk around dirty feet, now you get grass. You can lay down, do whatever you like, just be happy, you know, make any kind. The guys who stayed, like had me and Ryan, that's my friend Ryan. Me and him was here the longest. We got ticketed, we got arrested for staying here, but never got kicked out. You know, get arrested, come back the next day. Me and Ryan was the only one, always come back. No matter what happened, we were right back here. You know why? It was comfortable. No matter what we did, we stayed out of the way. We make sure we're not uh, making a nuisance. But me and Ryan was here the longest. Then I have a friend named Bada. He was here a long time. The newest one, uh, the butter, is an old one. And the newest ones is uh, oh, everybody else. Bradley, uh, my niece Tita, Jeremy, Jules, and David. That's all the new guys. Me, Ryan, and Butter was here the longest. And then there's Sarah. Sarah's uh, my friend Ryan's friend. So like nine, nine of us stay here. So, so, so uh, nine of you guys stay here and they're coming on January. Yeah. But you see, like I said, my dogs don't know. Anything else but a beer. So if they kick me out, they can kick me out, but they're not gonna make me move, you know? I ate them you. My dogs are gonna stay around this area. No matter what. Because my dogs know this area. That's all they know. So the only thing I will do is just move away. I gotta move, but I'm not gonna move far. I'll always be back over here the next day. Because my dog know this. They know this place. This is their house. But hey, like I said, they chase us out. They're chasing us out of there, but not out of here. I'm gonna stay here no matter what. So all of a sudden, DLNR just decided. To no, not DLNR. This lady from DLNR. The DLNR, they don't bother me, you know. They see me, we talk, story, you know, they ask me who stay here. It's like, uh, they don't bother, you know, they just like know who stay here. 
they did one census on us um, but uh, that you know when you get here okay, they gotta come, come count who stay around and how many people stay here so they came count us so and they no bother you know what I mean and all of a sudden after the hurricanes and then right after the hurricane after the primaries then came close to September or then the, the lady came came in the middle of October told us we gotta get out of here in 30 days so I'm looking at her I don't know who she is she never identified us herself whatever so I'm telling okay you know she came with one shirt, but she never said she represents a DLNR. And to the second time she came, she said that she represents a DLNR. But see, to me, the lady who's in charge is the lady over there, you know, the harbor, harbor master. She's the boss because uh, what she say in this harbor, that's, you know, goes because uh, that's the only person who would tell me I gotta go. Then, then I believe that, you know, when she tell me that, because she's the harbor master, I would believe her because uh, the other harbor masters, they really never bother me, you know. But like I said, this lady I, I did not know and to my niece and talk to him, she tell us we gotta get out of here. But to me, that lady, like I said, the lady in the, the harbor house, that lady never said nothing. Hard for me to believe because if anything, she would be the one who make the call, nobody else. Because this her harbor, she's the harbor master. But yeah, this, this lady, I don't know her, but I know nothing against her. I don't know why. Fifteen years ago, they started going after people. I lost a lot of stuff in the 15 years that I was here. You know, nighttime raids, daytime raids, illegal raids. They just take our shit. But they don't put it in a... A container where you can see them. You can see them. They just throw it in the rubbish can and just send it down the road. I had, I was here for a lot of that. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so so are they coming in January? That's what they said. But you know, nothing was said. Uh, like I said, all of a sudden, just before the election, they come tell me I gotta get out, and that's out of the blues. When I was young, my grandfather always told me, you take care of the land, the land take care of you. And to me, I live here, the land take care of me, because I take care of the land. Somebody told me, oh, the plants must love you because they grow over here. I don't know. Do you, do you want people to tell people about them, that DLN are coming? To of course, them? but uh, there, it's not the DLNR to me, it's not them, it's somebody who represents them. Because uh, this lady, she don't know nothing about us guys over here because she's in the office over there, you know. She she don't come out here, she don't see people, she don't know anybody around here. She just came over here, bring her uh, friend who was asking us if we need help, you know, they can give us some program. She said, no, we don't need help. Why we need help for? You like offer us something like a semi kind of prison thing. No way, that's not for people, free. we free people. Us guys, we Hawaiian, we're supposed to be on the ground. I mean, that's all I see. How come we gotta get off our own land? Because uh, the people make the decision. Who are they? Are they Hawaiian people? Or are they Caucasian people or Oriental people? How come they make decisions for Hawaiian people? Hawaiian people supposed to make decisions for Hawaiian people. Not some strange person who has no Hawaiian in them. That's crazy, that's so crazy. You know, all Hawaiians was born free. Not, oh, you gotta get out of the beach. No way. 
We was born on the beach, born in the mountain. So you can tell us, get off the mountain, get off the beach. We born here. We're not some strangers that we're houseless. The strangers are homeless because it's not their home, it's our home. Me, I don't want to be with anybody, but hey, they don't mind if they're not Hawaiian. You know, like one, one Hawaiian man told me, we no more saying Coco, they no more saying Coco as us. How can they make decisions for Hawaiians? You know, we're not the same, they're different. We listen to our elders, because you know why? They were here a long time, and they teach us the right way. You know, you're not saying Coco, how can you tell us we gotta get off the beach? Crazy. It's like, get all mad from somebody who's telling you Oriental or whatever. But you know how Hawaiian, how can they tell you get off the beach? When we born on the beach, we born in the mountain. We not born in a hospital. We born, we, even though we was born in a hospital now, but we was born in the land. Not somewhere else. Me, I call homeless people from out of state. They come over here, stay. That's homeless people, you know why? This is not their home, this is our home. When they tell me, you homeless, I tell them, I'm not homeless, I'm houseless. This is my home. You crazy. Tell me, this is not my home. Fucking nuts. This is not their home, it's our home. It's all of us. But them. They let me make decisions and tell us that's not right. Who are they? Right? Who are they? Make decisions for people who's born in the land of Kaisos. I believe they're not supposed to change our heritage. They're not going to tell you stop doing that because they did that when they stop, make us stop talking Hawaiian. They change our heritage. But not now. Now we're supposed to be more smart. But seem like they're more stupid. I stupid. They're not stupid. They're supposed to be smart, but they're stupid. People like that. You no, know, see the people who live here. We don't do nothing wrong. We just live. But you guys like make any kind. I don't know why. You guys had bad life maybe. But my life was happy when I was young. Even now, still happy. But you guys like make any kind. You guys make the call, hey. My grandfather would turn in his grave, I'd tell you guys something stupid. So I would just go along with him because you know why? My, I don't let my grandfather turn over in his grave. I'm easy that. You know? Supposed to be. No even bara. You know? They never used to bara. All of a sudden they like bara. They crazy. Me? See my dogs? They love me, I love them. They love it here. That's why I'm not gonna move away from here. No matter what, give me tickets. Hey, I had plenty of them. Since 2003, I had so many tickets. I went jail, I get doggy tickets. Hey, I take them. You know why? Because my dogs is important to me. This, this, if I go jail, I, I see one of my friends, tell him for bail me out, he bail me out. I still yet gotta pay him back. But I get out, I go jail, I get out, but I come back from my dog because they're gonna be here. They're not gonna run around on the street, they're gonna stay right here. They say they want it, they only go around in the park, they don't go far. You know what? This all they know. This all they know is uh, running around free like how, how, how we supposed to be running around, having fun. The garden's for everybody, bro. That's the way it is. We share what we what we make, and uh, like if people no no make any kind, that's all good. But, uh, you guys can in, everybody can enjoy the land. Some people don't like us to enjoy the land. They like do stuff like close them, board them up, cage them up, let the thing overgrow. What for? So the thing can die. The land, you gotta take care of the land. The land take care of you. And land is for young guys. 
I'm buying no more land. What they gonna have when they're younger, when they get old? Cost so much money for buy one house. One Hawaiian kid, when he grow big, maybe he get lucky, maybe not. Then he gonna be over here too. But nothing wrong with over here. Because this way you born. On the beach. Because all these guys grow up on the beach. Every day go to the beach. Just like my dog and me, I go to the beach. But nobody grumble. We not grumbling. Why the other people gotta grumble? <laughs> right guys? Yeah. It's crazy. We just like be left alone, but we was left alone until this lady came along. I don't know why, she like make like that for And I'm not against dealing with the Department of Natural Land. So land, that's mean they take care of the land too, eh? I would listen to what they say because you know why? That's their job, to take care of the land. Now if they don't take care of the land, there's something wrong with that sign they get. Take care of the land. If you don't take care of the land, then you gotta change your name to like land killer. You know, nobody can live on the land, why? You just gonna let the land die. I mean, just overgrow whatever, go sell them. How can you sell something that's not yours? Because this piece right here must have been somebody else's, not the state or the city and county, because they got it blocked off like that. Yeah? How come they get it blocked off like that? The only other place they block off like this is by Japanese school. It's like eight feet from one part of the road to the other end, it's blocked off. Before it wasn't. You could drive all the way up to the beach. But now, that little section belongs to someone. That's what I know. Because you don't know, can do nothing that with that little partial. <laughs> you know what's another thing? Half of the park belongs to that partial. Because that's the only thing. <laughs> only like from, from, from the tree, no, from like him to over here. It, it's, it's blocked off. From the road to that much to the beach. Now nobody would own a cubic square that big, yeah, unless you had on 10. <laughs> <laughs> so small, you can fit maybe one car, but they get that thing blocked off because that's somebody else's property. Who's that? Miss Rosa. Hi, Miss Raposa. Oh, Miss Rosa. Yeah. Hi, Rosa. Go, go get her. Go get him. That's a lady who's bringing us food. This other lady. One of my friend's mom. She bring us food every once in a while. But that's cool. Did some people, like the donut lady never come, but there's, on my, Tuesdays, somebody bring us fresh donuts. And on Thursdays, the old seniors bring us donuts. They bring us fresh donuts. Weird. But the seniors, they always come. They always come. Sometimes they bring us leftovers, and this lady who brings it, mix it, heat it up. It's the bomb, she brings leftovers. But, all in all, life is good over here. It don't look like it, but it's good. You know why? We're free. We're not tied up. That's why I don't tie my dogs up, because they're free too. But they don't go far. And they don't bite. They make tiny noise as you can hear them. Hey! Don't mind me, that's just my dogs. Gotta yell at them or they just gonna make noise like like kids running around crazy. This is my oldest dog, Bear. My oldest, this is the oldest puppy I have. All of these is all brothers and sisters. I kept, I get eight. Now they're all from, two of them is, two of them is like I get eight letters over here, eight different ones, you know, brothers and sisters. This guy is the oldest, then go down to the next. But I get seven. Seven dogs over here is one litter, you know, from each litter I had. I had ten. My dog had ten, not me. But I give them away. You be like on dog, you just gotta show up when the thing is born. And ask me, you know, then. Because uh, I don't can tell you when the thing stay in the stomach, but when the thing came out. Hey, all I ask for my dogs is a good home. Yes. Hold on, girlie. This is the biggest I can get, and this is the littlest ones I get. Right there? Yeah? If you like a dog, you're lucky you come see me when my dog give birth. 
Oke, okay. pahami di bagian gurung. I give my dog to people who get gurung. I don't sell them. Even though they say, oh, you can make money, but my dogs are not money. They like me. People say I treat my dog weird, but I cook for my dogs every night. Cook them dinner. They pox up or chicken. Yeah, guys. Time for eat. Yeah, this is my little guys. My kids is big already. So, it's all my little guys. This is not little, but this is big as the kid. <laughs> but that's why I started my garden. I killed my dog by accident, but the garden came nice. So, my dog is happy. <laughs> so, what else have you seen out here? That, taking care of the uh, I seen uh, the big one stuff bigger than the shark. This bugger was like two tons or two thousand pound. One freaking Hawaiian monk seal. That bugger came up on the beach. That bugger was huge. Like for me, a little bit past you to him. I mean, that shark, the thing was so huge, the tail was kind of skinny. But that bugger just came more wide and more wide when and the fucking thing was like. One big fat torpedo was like, was like so huge and thing came back too skinny. Yeah, when the, everybody was coming out of water mad, kind of like fucking just digging out because had something coming, you know, fast. Hey, this bugger, when he came out of water, he just came out, boop, 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 hole. Everybody's just like, boom, just run. <laughs> Never seen that. Hey, this bugger just on a shallow sand, he just didn't come up like that out of water and just chill his, and he stick with his. Oh, everybody just in yodel. <laughs> Never seen that before. All the beach, there was one new. How come everybody coming out of water? They didn't see, came flying out. Everybody didn't run. Was so, you know, ah! That's crazy. <laughs> Bigger than, I mean, like on double bunk bed, the thing was. Maybe white like that, but not that tall. But it came up like that. But when nobody going to see it up, you he like, hey, he's taller than me. <laughs> That's the meanest thing i seen over here. And uh, the guys didn't catch the shark out here. Perry Dane, they didn't catch a big shark out here. But ever since then, the biggest shark was caught, that was the one in the garden. <laughs> and that's the one that you... you I will make, yeah, because mind. that's what I went see. You know, when that shark came on land, that's all I could see, I said, this motherfucker is huge. So that's the only thing I could come close to making him. That's why we got him. We got our own uh, fin, we made them out of the boogie board, cut the angles there. Eh? And the tail is made out of the boogie board. But we couldn't make them go like this, you know how the tail go? You know why? No more enough room over there. <laughs> that would be huge. <laughs> would block the walkway. Plenty of things I used to have. I used to have one as big as that square part where the date tree stay by the shark. That used to be on gigantic octopus. Yeah? I used to have one gigantic octopus because, uh, just because. I mean, as that big square was the whole octopus. His head was huge, his arms went around curling. Looked like he was walking across the sand. So you guys uh, make, make a lot of uh, nets and then you learn that from your father? My grandfather. My grandfather used to pull my ears, put pins on them for me to listen and watch. But you know what? I never learned the way he wanted me to learn, but I learned it by, I make hokuleas eh, out of newspaper. See, you should have told me you guys was coming, I would have made you one. Anybody over around here get one newspaper? Ah, uh, hokulea, who will get one? Who will get one? Mm -hmm. Oh, I don't know who get one over here. So from the Lahala leaves? No, newspaper I make them. Newspaper. Okay. Nice All newspaper. newspaper. Yeah. Totally, uh, everything natural. But I make them uh, like the regular hokulea, the one you see on the ocean. I can make them any size. Too bad I know more one I had, on. I made one about that big. So you know when you make them that big, you gotta make the sails bigger. Because actually, hokulea is only four feet wide in the middle. You know that? You know why it's four feet wide? So it can go through the waves instead of uneven. 
So the, the closer the wave, the canoe, so he can pierce through the wave. Now if he was wider, one going to go like that. Boom. That's how they break, you know, one go over before the other one. That's why the, that boat got to be close. Four feet apart is the only way he can go through the wave. If not, I think I'll crack the canoe in half because one going to lift up before the other one. The thing not going through the wave, eh? the thing going over. You gotta go through the wave. That's why, was, that's why they had the, the thing go straight. I think Hawaiians only travel straight lines, you know why? They travel straight to where they're going, and all they gotta do is turn the sails and go straight back, you know, follow the same path. They never used to turn because they never know where they was going to turn, right? Oh, we gotta go turn this side and then we're going to the other side island. No, they drive. From where they stay, they, they know they're going there. They go straight over there. You know why? That's the path they knew. And for them to come back, all they had to do is turn the sails and they come straight back this way. Crazy, eh? That's what I think. That's the only way they could get around because you couldn't be making turns in the middle of the Pacific where you don't know when you make the turn. Did you make the right turn or the left turn? You made the wrong turn? That's why they travel in straight lines. They wouldn't be able to just go like, oh, we're going to turn left here, turn right there. They wouldn't be able to find where they're going. Too many turns on a wide ocean. That's why I think they follow the stars, but only on straight angle. One of the nicest villages I've seen. This is a free land. It's for everybody. Tourists and all. Even though we don't like tourists, but this is for tourists and all. You know why? They like see people. I have a lot of people who come from the mainland, have one set of ladies. They always come over here. So far, four years straight, they come. They come, oh, the thing is getting different, it's getting bigger, you know. These ladies, and they came this year, and I only had two of them instead of four of them. I always had four of them, man. But only had two of them this year. Oh, the other ones didn't come because one of them sick, you know. But they always come. They say, yeah, I see. Everything's getting all greener now. Before it was, wasn't as green, but now it's greener, you know. They tell me, oh, my shower necklace. Oh, you got to fix it. They know that much about this place. So it's always for tourists, but the unusual tourists is the ones who really is different. You know why? They come and look. The other ones, they look from the outside. Hard to see something you like look at from the outside. But the ones that they don't care about the eyes outside or inside, they come inside and they look. That's the only small ones. They're not scared. You scared? You don't know nothing. You know acts, you don't get nothing. So, so that's what you and then so yeah, you just be, being who you are and Yeah, that's living. yeah, you know, just live. Like I said, I wouldn't be able to ask somebody for help because I don't know how to say, oh help me. What can I ask them to help me with? I don't know. You know, so like I say, if you need help, I help you anytime. Hey, my hands, my legs, no problem. I don't mind working. But you ask me, I give. I like that. You know, you give, you receive, vice versa. You know, that's how. And that's what makes it better. People you don't know that give, and you give back, hey, you feel better when somebody remember you and they come back and they say, oh, you remember me? I was so-and-so and you let me stay over here. I had plenty of guys like that, you know, to come back see me because uh, they're, they're different or whatever, but they always come back to me, oh, thanks, Aiki. That's good for me. Yeah. That makes me happy. You know why? They're different and they feel better. But they always come back, some people always come back, tell me, hey, Aiki. And they always tell me, you're still here. You know? But I love that, you know why? I'm still here. You know why? I know, to me, I don't do nothing wrong, so why should I leave? Why should I move out? Or did I do that, anything wrong? No, I don't think so. Nobody thinks so because nobody bothered into this strange lady, but hey, that's why I'm Kuliana, the lady, sorry. And I don't like to make pili here. Maybe someone can talk to her. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, like I said, me, I don't know how to grumble because if you like fight, I know how to fight, but I know can grumble. But I don't like to fight because you know why? That's how you make enemies and you make, oh, Pilikia, hey, my, 
no can have pilikia. Pilikia is not good. I remember my father always used to booze. And then when they're ready for fight and grumble, my grandfather said, Hey, how long you guys drink together? You guys argue the same thing. Not supposed to be even grumbling. Just drink, get drunk, go home. No more pilikia. And that's it. No more fighting. If you you drunk, you can go home, whatever, but no more fighting. My grandfather would give everybody crack, that's why. <laughs> and that's how, that's how come the old is the old, because they they seen everything, they know everything, they've been there. And that's why, that's our, that's who we look up to, is the old, the ones, the wise ones. They're not there for being stupid, they're wise, they, they're there because they know what they're doing. So that, like I said, the guys, because I, I see plenty older Dialera guys, and those guys, when they come, they mean business. But see, we same cocoa. The Hawaiian, Hawaiian men, we same cocoa, so I wouldn't be able to grumble. You know why? They're older. I raise, respect the elder. Even though you're old, you're not older than them, so that's still your elders. So that's the way it would be. Me, I would. Old fashioned, they say I'm stupid. I say I'm not stupid. That's the way it is. You respect your elders. Your elders is older than you, and they know. They're not doing that for. They like get rid of you. Just that's the way it is. If you Hawaiian, you, 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 you gotta believe that because that's a, that's how our tutu was. No matter what, the old Hawaiian tutus. That's how they was. Life is good. This guy keep on going. No more life? Eh. Hey. Shady like that. But you gotta have life for the little ones. The little ones gotta have life. After us, gotta have little ones. If no more something for them, then no more us. You know, they're knocking us off madly. Uh, to me, we're endangered. The Hawaiian people. To me, we're almost gone. Then if we're all gone, how can this be Hawaii if we're no more Hawaiian, right? They cannot call this the Hawaiian Islands if we're no more Hawaiians. That's why we got to keep the Hawaiians coming, or well, at least alive. I, mean, I get like 75, 80% Hawaiian. But, like I said, we are dying breeds. How do you make the, the monk seal, ex, you know, gonna be extinct? Hawaiians is like that. We know more two million. We know more that many Hawaiians in Hawaii. Not even. Maybe we crack a million, if we're lucky. With, with more than uh, 50%, we'll be real lucky. But, not, not, not plenty of Hawaiians. We need Hawaiians, that's what we need. But we're not like the old Hawaiians where incest is involved, but we're not like that. But the ones with plenty of Hawaiian better have kids. That's all I say, you gotta have kids. You know my kids? Hawaiian dying breed. Me, I'm lucky. I get daughters, they all get kids now. So, that's a little bit. 